Hello? Lance Troll. Yes, that's you, me speaking. You are live on the internet right now. How are you, Lance? Am I really? Yeah. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> uh, Lance, this is uh, Javier from Flat Out Fever. Um, okay. This is Danny here. How are you? Yeah, uh, and Mike. How All right. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, it, it pleasure, going, pleasure to finally talk to you. Uh, we've been trying to line uh, this interview for a while, and uh, honestly, thank you so much for fitting us in your what must be a very, very busy schedule now ahead of uh, ahead of Imola. Um, how are you? Yeah. How are you feeling? How's how's uh, how, how's stuff going? Are you are you pumped to to possibly grab the championship this weekend? I definitely am pumped. Um, you know, it's it's going to be in the back of my mind. Uh, you know, all weekend. But uh, at the same time, it's uh, it's another weekend, just like uh, all the others, and I'm gonna need to be focused on uh, on the job uh, at hand, and I'm gonna have to take it race by race and uh, try and uh, try and you know maximize uh, maximize the points I can, like every other weekend. Yeah, but let's 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 be honest. I mean, the, the, it, Max Gunther is is the next one up, and there's no way that he's that he's catching you at this point. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. But. Uh, <laughs> We have seen that, uh, you know, motorsports. Uh, we all know that many things can happen, and uh, oh, yeah. it's uh, it's never done till it's done. So I'd rather be on the focus side and uh, than than on the uh, than on the relaxed side. So um, yeah, no, but it's it's we're definitely we're definitely in a healthy position. Oh, you know, yeah. we we have a good points lead, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's coming to the end of the championship. So yeah, never mind, um, just the championship. Know, last, last big push. Take it with a dominance. Yeah, <laughs> leave no question. <laughs> and, and it has been. Yeah, a, I mean, uh, yeah. Sorry, it, it has been a bit of a dominant year for me. Uh, for you, uh, I, I would. I was just. We were just saying. We did a little short introduction before you. We, we went uh, live with you right now, and um, we were saying how you started this year with just a single win to your name in F3, and fast forward the clock to now, and. It's just been we've we've heard the O Canada at the top step of the podium more times <laughs> than than ever before. Yeah. It's like I'm yeah, back in I mean, elementary for, school. For sure, it's it's been it's been a really strong season for me. Um, you know, I think, uh, but it's it's a combination of of everyone. You know, and all the work that w that we did over the winter. You know, I with my engineers and with my you know getting closer to to my whole team and and I just you know I had a lot of confidence coming. Coming out of uh, out of last season with with that one win at the at the end of the championship last year, and you know just just coming into this year, I knew that uh, the the speed was there, and then it was just about putting all the little details together. And uh, and with the experience I had from last year, mm -hmm. we um yeah we we definitely made it work up to now. So it's it's been really good. I want to go out on a limb here and say that there is one name that probably had to do a lot. In, uh, in in your recent success, and uh, and that is uh, Luca Baldisseri, uh, your your mate from back in the Ferrari Driver Academy. Yeah, you brought him over, or you know he he went over. Uh, now he's a prema with you, uh, kind of coaching you. What, uh, what 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 kind of influence has he had uh, on your on your recent success? Yeah, Luca's had a, a, a huge influence on my success. I think he's, you know, he's really the one who mentored me, um, you know, all, even from karting and in Formula Four, then last year in Formula Three, and bringing me to to the level I am today in Formula Three. It's it's you know a big a big part of the job has has been him, and you know he's he's seen so many drivers, uh, you know, come up the ranks in in the past, and he's worked with so many great drivers and. He just he knows the you know what it takes to to really be successful and um, he's he's helped me a tremendous amount uh, over the years and uh, but but it, you know it's it's not only him it, it takes a, you know a team of people my engineer uh, you know my coach uh, all, all these all these people have have you know have really helped me reach uh, the level I am today so I have to thank all of them equally. So m moving to the next level, we saw in the last uh, couple of weeks you've fulfilled all your requirements for your super license application not yet what's the final requirement he's got to gotta be the 18. birthday the birthday <laughs> so aside from the birthday yeah um what are the final steps what is the like the final like the application look like, like what is the when you you have to go to the fia yourself and is there, any, is there uh, anything like that or yeah i'm, I'm not just, i'm not really too sure is it just a formality uh, you know what, what we have to do for that but i think um most important thing is 
is that we have the points now for it. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, winning Formula 4 and finishing fifth last year in Formula 3 and, um, and you know, now guaranteed uh, a top three in, in Formula 3 this season has gave me the points, uh, the 40 points required for the Super License. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the important part. Um, and, you know, uh, the other details I haven't yet discussed with uh, <laughs> with everyone. Um, but, um, yeah, no, what matters is the points. And then, uh, yeah, you know, from, we'll take it from there. A little bit more difficult than in the, uh, the Gran Turismo video game, although. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Gran, to be honest, Gran Turismo can get hard at times. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, talking about that, like how – how would you compare the Williams simulator to like a, like a normal, like PS4 game? Like I'm yeah, sure it's going to be leaps and bounds, but just like, cause this is a question that keeps coming up. Like fans, like don't quite grasp that. It's like, it's a completely different experience. Yeah. I mean, for sure. It's, you know, it's as close to reality as, as we can get today. Um, but it's, it's still a simulator and there's still a screen and it's not, you know, it's not like you're, you're on the track um, driving a real car, so you don't get the wind um, and tire sure, bits. Sure, for face. sure. I mean, you know, the, they they've got it. They've got everything um, needed to make it as close to reality as possible. You know, motion platforms and you know um, the best project projectors out there with the best screen and to make the graphics look to to to, to almost perfection. So it's for sure. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of money put into it, and there's um, you know there's a lot of people working to, to make that simulator as close to the real car as possible. But, you know, at the same time, it's, you, you can't treat it uh, like reality. You know, there's, there's always differences. So of course it's, it's, uh, it's a bit better than the, than the Gran Turismo with the, the, you know, <laughs> with, with, the uh, with the PlayStation remote, but uh, <laughs> at the same time, you know, it is, it is, uh, it, it is still sort of a game in my eyes and I don't like to treat it, you know, um, to, to the same level of reality because there's, you just can't compare the two. Luckily, you've got some reality testing lockdown as well. Yeah. How's 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 the jump from from your Prema F3 car to the FW36? Like it must like it's I I can't even imagine like it's it's got to be like a, a, two different worlds or, or I don't know is there is there are they similar in any way? It's like when I upgraded from a I Honda mean, Civic I, to a Honda think, Accord. I think they are more similar than than what people think. I mean, you know, for sure, Formula One, uh, in terms of power and you know downforce, it's it's the most impressive machine in the world. You know, it's it's basically a rocket ship on on wheels. So it's <laughs> in in that sense for sure, it's it's a big jump from F3. But at the same time, you know, F3 is, a, is already a really high level. And, uh, you know, the yeah. car has a lot of downforce. There's a lot of grip. Um, the power is not so uh, so big compared to F1. But, but the car is, is, is already really good in F3. So, um, of course, the, the, the jump is big. But it's, it's, it, surprisingly, um, it's, it's very manageable. And, um, and I think that, you know, um, over... over uh, you know, a few laps or a few days, I, 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 um, I'll, I'll be able to get in the rhythm pretty quick. That's cool. That's cool, man. Um, it, it, how about on the team side? Like, I'm, I'm sure it, it must also be like a completely different game going from Prema and then dealing with, with, with a team the size of Williams. And, and and everything that is like do you get the same the same feeling because I, I i was watching a couple of uh of your videos uh where you go around the prema uh garage and like show their little coffee maker and how that's apparently what runs the team and all that uh <laughs> is, is is there the same kind of like family atmosphere somewhere like williams i think uh i think it is um you know i, I think prema is, is already very professional as a team uh, even you know in f3 gp2 they they work at the standard of, of formula one teams in my opinion and that's part of that's part of the reason why they're so successful you're about to become um, world champions in, in all the different categories but but of course williams you know they're they're, they're a formula one team um i think the level of professionalism in prema is, is just as high i think the big difference is that there are just a lot more people in Formula One and there's a lot more engineers and a lot more people to speak to throughout the weekends and throughout the tests and there's there's a lot more going on. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's it's like anything, you know, it's it's very similar in, in many ways, but, but there are there are differences and, you know, I'm I'm gonna need to learn how to, to work with a new team and work with new people because of course it's 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 not exactly the same. 
Yeah, I guess. So l- looking looking to next year, I guess. Well, we can't really but, talk about next year. Well, <laughs> not himself. We can talk about next year, but the, the Formula One calendar, just the calendar in general, was announced a day or two ago, and Brazil and Canada were announced as uh, provisionally on the calendar because of uh, because of money, some kind of uh, Bernie Bernie There's, Bernie Bernie manipulation. There's talk that the Canadian Grand Prix might not make a comeback next year i mean i went on the website uh yeah. and they're still not selling, not selling tickets. tickets yet is that is that something that that really? you'd see as yeah they're not selling before last year they'd sell you tickets like the day after the previous grand prix but now yeah monday morning yeah, you got emails they're not I'm selling coming. tickets yet i think that they're that the rumors i mean there's there's got to be something to that that we might not see the comeback of the canadian grand prix or like maybe take a, maybe it taking another like a year's break is that something that like worries you like how, like how do you feel that like from the point of view as a canadian racing driver i was thinking also with with your, I, with your actually, new clout I, I actually had no i had no idea about that before before you guys just told me so wow. um, that's that's really that's really bad to hear but um yeah. I, I really just hope it works out because you know uh, me being canadian i think it'd be really unfortunate really sad to you know not not be be able to to have a canadian grand prix i think uh I think it would uh, it would definitely not be good for the sport absolutely i was just gonna say being canadian and with your new clout Maybe you could get in, in contact with your local MP. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, hopefully. Maybe, I'll, I'll maybe write a letter or something, do, an angry email. Honest, I'm, I, I, have, I have quite a bit on my hands at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Wait until you're yeah, world I'll, champion. I'll make a phone call or two. Hopefully, I'll be able to convince them. <laughs> <laughs> for, no, for sure, man. Uh, call them on Monday. Speaking of being Canadian, <laughs> yeah. well, now now you're you're in Geneva right now, and I, I, that makes sense. You gotta be, but you gotta be pretty much like based in Europe when you're when you're going up the ranks of motorsport. But I got a question for you: Is there any good poutine in Geneva? Unfortunately, there isn't. You know, that's actually a big problem we have living in Geneva. Um, there, there's not a, there's not any poutine. But, um, but uh, no, it's it's a good life in Geneva. Um, other than the poutine, which is uh, which is a disappointment. Um, it's it's really good being based there. You know, there's uh, there's great skiing. Um, you know, uh, there's there's a lake. So in the summer. It's, it's really cool, you know, go go out on the boats and, and have a good time with some friends. So it's it's a great place uh, to be based. Well, I was going to say, just may, maybe make you feel a little better. I had some Toronto poutine yesterday and it was garbage. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, definitely. I wouldn't I wouldn't go for a Toronto poutine. Got to no, no. have it in, in Quebec. It know, might, that's the only way. One of my first and my last. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> It, it just okay. It, I, I, we also wanted to touch now on like you as a person. It does seem like a, a lot of interest from uh, from our listeners, from our from our audience. Seems to be that now that your name has been coming up a lot uh, in the F one circles, uh, and you know with the relationship with Williams and what may or may not happen next year. A lot of people just seem seem to be interested about about you. Uh, and, and 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 how like like what what your approach. Uh, uh, to, to the F1 lifestyle might be if you get there or not. Uh, but I, what I really want to know is um, how, like, like, have you gotten to drive your dad's LaFerrari? <laughs> uh, the LaFerrari, actually, you know what? I was lucky enough. I, I actually did, but it wasn't, it actually wasn't my dad. Um, I, I got to drive it at Fiorano. Um, I got, oh, no way. Was, oh, was, wow. uh, I think it was, yeah, it was, it was before the car was out. Um, they were testing it at Ferrari, oh. and uh, <laughs> and I was there that day. And and yeah, I was lucky enough to to get a couple laps. In, How is so, that beast? Did you um, like? Did you pedal to the metal? Yeah, no, it, it was pretty impressive at the time. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, so I was I was still pretty young. Um, but uh, I I definitely was pedal to the metal. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely a, a life experience. So which, which was your favorite, like like to drive of your dad's cars? I haven't, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm not, I'm not driving them very often. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really his toys. They're not mine. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm busy. I'm busy enough driving my Formula Three car for the moment. Yeah, uh, absolutely. One, one thing at a time. <laughs> I'm sure your dad wants to drive that too. So <laughs> it goes both. Yeah, ways. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, but for sure, your, your calendar must be like uh, geez, very, very full, very packed, and 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 that is one thing that uh, we've we've talked to previous drivers. Uh, actually, we talked to uh, Tatiana Calderon uh, back when she was in F three with you, and just describing her her workout routine and and it, like it's it's crazy. You guys are basically like you, you're 
either working out or or just doing media stuff or just running around all the time like where do you where do you have time for like you know friends girlfriends school and all that yeah i think it's definitely a hectic life you know being on the road and and um you know racing a lot it's 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 a unique lifestyle it's not it's not the same as you know going to school and just kind of taking it easy but but it, it it's it's what i love to do so at the same time it's it's hectic but i'm i'm really enjoying it and uh and yeah when it comes to friends and you know uh girlfriends and all, all these things you know life itself i think it's all about having having a balance i think that's really important it's you know there, there's other things to life than just racing and you know working out and and all these things so it's it's important to have that that balance and you know it's important to to have the the racing side of it um, covered, and but at the same time, it's, it's you know it's important to disconnect from time to time and really you know enjoy just just being being a kid and uh, and you know hanging out with friends and uh, having a good laugh. So it's uh, it's all about a balance. So, uh, speaking of that, uh, being a kid, there we got a clip of you on the podium here. Yeah, okay. Th this is this is I think it was like the second or third race at Po earlier this year. Where, and and I just okay. I this was I I was laughing out loud because it shows you taking a <laughs> sip of whatever that thing is that they handed you on the podium. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, like yeah, and you're yeah, like you're like what is this crazy. crap and dumped yeah. it all out. What was that? <laughs> being a kid, yeah, being no, I was just, I, you know what I was disappointed because like you know being a kid, it it's is the... one of the only times I'm allowed to you know sip some champagne. That's what I was gonna say. So was it non alcoholic? Now, you know, I worked my butt off. I'm on the podium and they're not giving me champagne. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, so, was it some so, just non-alcoholic no, juice? Bit, I was a bit, uh, I, I was a bit disappointed, I must say. So I, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't too happy about that. Carbonated grape juice. <laughs> yeah, they, that that just, looked like it didn't taste very good, anyway. <laughs> no, it was like some sort of apple cider from Po or wherever. So it, no, it wasn't amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and the other races, though, they do give you like a proper like Henkel drink or something like that. This the German. Yeah, they give you like a, a big a big bottle of champagne of Henkel so it's, it's fun to spray and you know and a sip or two but uh, at race three not race one or two because you still got to still, race, still race have to three, drive I'll, after I'll tend to have a couple of sips which is, which is nice <laughs> <laughs> well that, that that's pretty cool um maybe maybe it would taste better in shoey form yeah maybe <laughs> i don't know about that you know I'm, I'm not too sure i think that's that's crossing the line of it but, uh, yeah that that kind of got to my stomach to be honest I'm not a big fan oh we you've tried it <laughs> no the shoey i didn't try it just watching it on the tv like, uh, we, it wasn't for me oh yeah we got we got we got well the australians got the shoey we gotta we gotta get our heads together and think of something canadian yeah, to maybe, do maybe you could drink out of your hat yeah, maybe or something definitely not along those lines <laughs> Your hat. Use your hat. They give you a brand new fresh hat when you win the race. Yeah. Um, yeah. There we go. Uh, what there's uh, you. So you 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 spend some time. You're you're friends with Esteban Ocon, right? Or like you 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 have some sort of you, you talked to, to yeah. Esteban, right? Yeah. He, he's an F1 right now, and one of the first things that they that they've been doing. I don't know if you're familiar with with this uh, the Sky broadcast. The, the Sky broadcast. The, the British Sky. Ted's, um, Ted's bumbling yeah, no, around. I I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah, do you know who Ted Kravitz is? Yes, I do. Okay, yes, so yeah, Ted wandering one, around, bothering everyone. Yeah, one of the things that he likes to do is that when when a new rookie comes into F1, uh, he goes and asks him this series of questions. Uh, it's like a rapid fire, like you know, round robin questions, like uh, to see like kind of what like what what your personality is. And let me tell you, Esteban Ocon, like he 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 kind of didn't do so well. And because we want really? you to succeed, we're going to prepare you right now. So let's do. <laughs> okay, I like yeah, it. I yeah. Like it. <laughs> Sorry, Ted. Apologies to Mr. Kravitz. <laughs> yeah. No, Ted, yeah, Ted. We're not. We're not dampening on your parade here. We just want to prepare our boys. So, all right, Lance. If he, if he ever asks you these, don't tell, tell him about me, this. Tell me. Shoot, yeah. Shoot. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So, what is your best dish that you can cook? Uh, spaghetti parmigiano. Nice. Very good. Yeah, that's tasty. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? Uh, uh, snakes. It's not my thing. Not my oh, thing. yeah. It's very scary. Uh, yeah. What makes you grumpy? What makes you grumpy? Uh, bad organization. Ah. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that works. Uh, what is a, something not to ask a girl on the first date? 
not to ask a girl on the first date. Um, I don't know. You know, normally I write, I ask the right questions. <laughs> um, that was the right answer. Not to, um, not to ask a girl on the first date. Um, you like cheese. Do you like cheese? <laughs> you like cheese. Just stay away from it. Yeah. Stay away from it. Just stay away from it. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, what is the last music album you downloaded or bought or streamed? Um, to be honest, I'm not big on music albums. Uh, I just really go song by song. Um, you know, what are you listening to these days? Uh, I'm, these days, I really dig. Uh, I really dig Drake, so I'm listening to a lot of Drake. Nice. I think it's, you know, it's a good mix of R and B and like a, you know, the six. soft rap. So I, You're being yeah, patriotic, like basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is patriotic <laughs> at the same time. Um, uh, but at the same time, you know, I listen to to a lot of kind of dance, mellow, um, good vibes. Uh, music, you know, uh, Robin Schulz, kind of Calvin Harris, so that kind of stuff. Oh, right um, and, you know, I also like listening to some really, like, mellow, um, just relaxing, like Ed Sheeran sort of thing. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it just depends the moment. Sweet. Cool, great. What would be yeah. your superhero power? Uh, Iron Man. Iron Man? Iron Man. So Iron Suit. Yeah, because I like, well, it's not really a power. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. So, uh, if I had to pick a power, it would be, I think, Hulk. <laughs> oh, okay. get really angry and tear it down? Nice. Oh, you're not going to fit yeah, in the FW39, though. I would like though. to, like, jump and destroy buildings. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to fit in the FW39. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. You wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be able to get your legs in there. <laughs> What's your best karaoke song? My best karaoke song? is um well actually the one and only karaoke song i sang with my best friend when we were about like 10 years old was um was begging like you know that that song i forget by who it's by exactly but i'll tell you right now i have it on my phone <laughs> give me like five seconds it is by it's, it's like uh it's, yeah, it's a good it's a little beat uh hold up a second So it's by um, Madcon, Begin uh, by Madcon. Nice. Okay, yeah. I sang that in the Caribbean <laughs> karaoke night with my best friend. We were about like 10 or 11 years old, and it was, it was, it was so funny. I still remember it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> gonna, I just wrote it down. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, yeah. Boxers yeah. or briefs? Or fireproof underwear? Um, boxers, boxers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit Un of a weird question. Under the fireproof underwear? <laughs> Yeah, under the fireproof under. Well, we're not actually allowed, so uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure they're not polyester. Yeah. You know? yeah, no, definitely. My dad, my dad's friend as a kid did a blue angel, and uh, <laughs> he got some. He had to go to the hospital. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes. no, no, not good. What's your most annoying habit? My most annoying habit is probably the urge to eat chocolate. Mm. That kind of uh, that kind of yeah. ties with with the next yeah. question. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. What is your biggest indulgence? Is it chocolate? <laughs> chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate. Oh man! And you live in Switzerland, so you're like you basically live in the diet, land of chocolate. I, 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 unfortunately, it's not part of my diet, but I must say it is my my guilty pleasure. <laughs> In the world capital of chocolate right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not exactly how. <laughs> <laughs> how would your friends describe you? Um, I think calm, um, and you know, um, focused. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, that's a good question. You know what? I think. I think competitive. Competitive oh. is 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 definitely a part of me, um, but at the same time, um, very calm. Nice. Yeah, calm and competitive. I like that calm competitive. A calm and competitive Canadian sounds good to me. <laughs> so now, there we go. There we go. Put it together. I like it. <laughs> and the last question, which is where, where Ocon kind of fumbled. What is three cubed? 
27, right? Th- there you go. Oh. Boom. Oh, oh Canada. Canada right? Brilliant. Yes, it is. You I got did, it right. You know, I, 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 did, I did finish high school. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, so I it's, know yeah. I, th- I think Ocon, like to, to to his credit, he just got a little nervous. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. there you go. So there, you are. It's all good. It happens. It happens to all of us. It yeah, you got, a- absolutely. Yeah, Ted and a thirty pound camera in your face. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. we talked to Martin, your uh, your manager there, uh, we kind of said that we were only gonna be uh, going for like a 10, 15 minute interview. We're, we've gone way past that. Uh, but right. but cle- yeah, hopefully that's okay. If uh, like no, I don't know. it was good. I I had a kick, so it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> that, like, awesome. uh, yeah, all right, man. Uh, I, I actually I have a couple more questions. If you still have, do you still have time? Is it is it still cool? Like, yeah, or... no, no, no rush at all. Yeah, fire away. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, Vettel versus Alonso versus Hamilton. Who wins in the same car? That's tricky. Um, Just... I'll have to say Alonso. Yes. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, but not. But, but to be honest, it's. It's really hard to say. Um, being a racing driver, um, I know how you know how difficult it is um, to be to be really really good, and I think that they're all really really good. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for all of them. They're all champions. Um, I'm just saying Alonso because I like Alonso. So, uh, <laughs> but but to, to be honest, I think they're all um, exceptional, and they're all um, you know top drivers. So uh, so I think it's it's more on on any given day than 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 anything else. So I got a question. Just before this interview, like when we did a little intro, we just did a quick overview of your career going back to 08. So just just in there, like what would you say is like the real turning point of your career where you realized like, yeah, I'm going to be a racer. Like I think I can get to F1. This is what I'm doing with my life. Like where in there? Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, it was, I think it was around 2011 uh, when I signed with Ferrari. Oh, 2010, sorry. 2010 when I signed with Ferrari. Oh wow! Um, at uh, at age eleven. Eleven years old. And uh, that you know that was when I moved to Europe, and that was when I you know started competing uh, in in karting internationally. Mm-hmm. And I knew from there, kind of, okay, that's you know this is this is what I want to do, and I'm I'm going to give it my all. So um, yeah, that was that was the moment where uh, where I knew like uh, I'm 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 going for it. So yeah. In, in in your many interviews, um, like one one of the themes that seems to come up uh, that I've noticed is that um, your your family and clearly like it's uh, it's something that, that that is very dear to you that that, that you're very uh, uh, that, that you that you claim that it's it's influenced you a lot and 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 I know that your uh, your dad would follow you around like when we started this podcast I think <clears throat> you were like in the middle of the Toyota Racing Series in New Zealand. And, uh, and and I guess uh, your dad went to all the races with you in a big RV and all that. Um, that is definitely yeah. something that like I'm I'm sure you can appreciate that not all drivers out there, uh, you know, even have the opportunity uh, to get. And, and it's something that I'm sure that you feel very lucky and very grateful for. Um, it is something that also the media seems to have been catching a lot of wind of and and and, and kind of referencing back. And there is some talk uh, among some of the more speculative media is saying that, you know, if if you go to F1, you'd be just another pay driver. What would you say to those people? Um, yeah, well, first of all, um, I want to address, um, you know, the, the fact that, that I do come from, from a wealthy family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that, let's face the fact that that's them. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I can't do anything about that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I think yeah. it's, it's nobody asked to know, be born. It's, it's just part of life. Um, yeah. But I think that I've proven myself um, in racing. I think money is, you know, it definitely it definitely gets, you know, it, it got me to to where I am today in the sense of you know giving me the opportunity to to race. But I think it, it gives you the opportunity, and you know, if if you if you want to just take the opportunity and, you know, be bad and not win and be slow, well, you can do that with money, of course, but <laughs> to, to really win, I like, mean, that's, that's not, you know, my, my father isn't driving the car for me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing it myself. So, um, I think it, it gives me the opportunity, but on the other hand, um, yeah, it, it, it's definitely, it's a sport that you need money. Like, you know, you, you can't change that. Um, you know, there's plenty of incredibly talented drivers who just, you know, didn't have the opportunity to do it. And I think that's really unfortunate because sports, you know, I, I don't think it should be like that. I think you should, you 
know, if, you, if you're good, you should be able to compete and it shouldn't come down to money. Mm-hmm. But I've, you know, I've, I've won, I've won championships. I've won races. I have proven, you know, to, 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 to be a good driver. And I, I, I can't do more than that. So I, I, I just feel sorry for the people who, who, who just, you know, look at money and, and who, who, who just, you know, think that's, that's the, the easy way to, to describe me, you know, as, as a paid driver. I think, uh, I think there's more to it than that. And, um, and yeah, I mean, the, the, I can't say much more than that. I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my thing. I'm, I'm going out and competing and trying as hard as I can, like any other driver. And the fact that I have money, sure, maybe, you know, I sleep in a more comfortable bed, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the hotel, but other than that, it's, uh, it's completely irrelevant with, with, you know, winning races. It just, you know, you know, it, it gets you a hotel room and it gets you to travel around the, around the world and go to the races where it needs to go. But, you know, me on track winning those races, that's, that's not money at all. You know, you know, you know what else I would add to that? Yeah, tell me. Senna was a paid driver at one point. <laughs> yeah, true. true. <laughs> I think I think almost everyone was. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's unfortunate, but that's Formula One today. Yeah, and, it's, 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 yeah um, it is. It is know, what it I is. Think you don't get you don't get your you know whether it comes from from uh, you know your family, whether it comes from a sponsor. Money needs to come from somewhere in, yeah. in today's Formula One world. So, um, you know, I. I all I can do is is go go out there and and you know try as hard as I can. Yeah. Let your um, driving do the talking, man. That's that it. I, I don't think there's exactly. any, any doubt. Talk, You've talk, proven them all wrong exactly. already. No, other than that, it's, yeah, it's, uh, exactly. Talking on the track. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Absolutely. Now, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, uh, one thing that I that I wanted to say. I mean, and this is just like uh, personal. If if there is a Canadian Grand Prix next year which yep. I mean, there most likely will be but still yeah. there will if, be let's think positive yeah. there, will yeah. be. <laughs> there will be uh it, so yeah so there's gonna be a canadian uh, grand prix next year 2017 yeah. montreal there's gonna be uh, a, there's gonna be a double e pre so formula one can't be updone by formula e that's true <laughs> uh so yeah, next no, year <laughs> next year early june there's gonna be a canadian grand prix we're gonna be in montreal let's say you're gonna be in montreal why don't we go for a drink but <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, no, but but you're you're buying, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, oh, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, actually, b- uh, before we let you go, I do want to say, uh, no, that for sure, man, you you do have, uh, like, you're making us very proud. I'm sure that uh, more people out there, oh, are, are, yeah, are definitely good. Yeah, we, we we can't wait to hear the old Canada at the top step of the podium in F1, and I know that if somebody's gonna do it, it's it's gonna be you. Um, we're we're behind you. We know for sure that a lot of people in Canada are now uh, starting to tune into the sport, uh, which is great. It's magnificent. Uh, uh, we're um, we're friends with Tim Horaney. Tim Horaney is the guy that does the F1 stuff at TSN, uh, and he's also rooting for you a lot. He's making sure he's working his ass off. You and you and Latifi, uh, uh, yeah. Like. As as far as the Canadian media is concerned, when you do make it to F one, you you're pretty much guaranteed that Tim Horaney uh, and we are going to be working our TSN's ass off. going to be pumping to make sure pumping that some stroll content. Oh yeah, that, that that you are first and foremost. And honestly, we 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 can't wait for for the news to come, and we and you know uh, we can't wait for you to clinch your F three title and take it from there. I'm I'm sure you've heard of. I really me. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. I I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, man. I guess uh, we'll, we'll let you go. Uh, you have, uh, I'm sure, tons of stuff to do today. Uh, and uh, well, you know, just keep killing it. Hey, hey, Lance. Yeah. Say what's up to Claire Tell for me. me. Say what's up to Claire for me. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya. Take care. All, All right. the best. Have a good day, man. Good luck this weekend. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Ciao. What a nice guy. Could he be our like prime minister or something like that? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be 18 for that too. Oh, True. We'll just bend the rules a bit. It's fine.